Hello, welcome to my second floss tube. My name is Amy. I am Fiber Arts Amy here and on Instagram. Um, somebody actually watched my first video, <laughs> and that was really exciting <laughs> to see some people watched it and um, enjoyed it. Um, I mentioned in that video that what I think I'm going to do and what I'm going to start today is um, I'm back in my full-time house where most of my stitching is hanging up. Um, I'd like to share the the finished objects that I have. Um, I, I'm not going to share all of them in one video though. That would take an enormously long time. What I thought I would do is kind of break it down and go by portions of the house, sections of the house. Um, today I'm going to do all of the cross stitch that I keep in the room that I'm in right now, which is what we call our library, um, behind my phone, which is what's filming me right now, there's a wall of books. <laughs> um, we are huge readers in this house. There's some bookshelves over there too. Um, huge readers, so we have books like on every surface, but we try to contain as many of them to this room as we can. Um, but this is also my stitching spot, because this is kind of like our, our quiet room. Um, with three kids, we try to have like a quiet room and a noisy room um, for them to hang out in, and this is the, the quiet room. Normally there's cross stitch all behind me, all along this wall and all over all the walls you can't see. What I've done is just pulled all of that off the walls for today so that I can show you each of the pieces um, easily. Um, I thought I'd just basically start and do a, a parade of some of my older finished objects. I have been stitching since 2004. Um, sometimes I, I feel the urge to be like, I don't have that much that I've finished, but then when I actually start looking around the walls and counting, I have tons of stuff that I've finished. The walls are covered. Um, so that's why, like I said, I'm gonna break it down and today I'm just gonna do the pieces that hang here in our library. I'm kind of going to go in generally reverse size order. Um, after I show some of these older whips, and I'll tell you what I know about them, I didn't write things down, so I don't know the fabric. Um, I usually know the general count because I'm pretty consistent with what I use, or at least I was for a very long time. Um, but I'll tell you what I do know, some of the details I, I do not know or don't remember, and I didn't necessarily write them down. Um, after I do all that, I'm gonna take a quick break to clean up and then I'll show you some of my whips um, that I've been focusing on here lately. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, first, I just wanna show you the small that I did. I actually did this not too long ago and I'm, I'm still not even sure who the designer is, um, but I love the, the fringe for the broom. It's a little tassel to make the broom. Um, we're big Halloween fans in this house. So I enjoyed doing this and just finishing it in a hoop and I just twisted some cord for a hanger and actually hangs on our hearth broom on the same hook as our hearth broom next to our fireplace in this room. Um, I don't do a lot of, I don't do that many smalls. Um, and when I do do a small, it's usually finished into something like a needle book or a pin cushion or something like that or on top of a box. Um, most of my frames get or most of my pieces get framed and hung on the wall, but I do have the small little one hanging. <laughs> you can see my fingers are dyed blue. I was dyeing yarn this week and um, my glove broke <laughs> and some blue uh, Cushing's dye. So I have blue fingers. So I've been, um, it's slowly working its way off. It's not focusing very well, but um, I've been avoiding working on certain pieces this week because I'm like deathly afraid of my like permanent blue dye getting onto my fabric. That's okay. Um, these will be fine. They're all under glass. Um, and it doesn't, the dye doesn't actually rub off that easily. I'm just paranoid. Um, this is a Just Nan box that I did. I'm a sucker for like small little stitchable items like this. Um, I love how this turned out. I love the little term in the middle, the pumpkins. I'm just a Halloween fan. And I think I mentioned it in my last um, video too. 
if I stitch something, it's not getting put away in a box. I mean, more power to those of you who are that organized <laughs> and you, um, you know, keep things like packed away for different holidays and they come out and you decorate. I don't do that. <laughs> if I stitch it, I don't care what holiday it was stitched for. It's up out year round. It's beautiful. I love it. I want to see it all the time. <laughs> And I know I'm the sort of person who would like pack stuff away and like never get it back out <laughs> and like lose track of it. Um, so everything just stays out. Um, and this I turned into a small pillow. Again, I'm sorry, I don't remember the designer. I'm pretty sure I downloaded it off Etsy, but I'm not positive. Um, stitched in 2015. Um, and I know this was on a small or really small piece of um, Oh, their name is escaping. Uh, crossed wing, crossed wing collection fabric, and I think probably 28 count. Most of what I've stitched is on 28 count, unless there was a good reason to do it differently. But I really enjoyed stitching that, and that just stays in a bowl with some um, applique pillows that I've done, and um, some spinning supplies like um, spinning wheels, spinning yarn supplies. Um, it sits in a bowl with those things. Okay, that's all the tiny things. Um, now on to framed pieces. And most of these are relatively old. Um, so this is a black work piece, although I did it in reverse. I did it with white floss on, I'm pretty sure this is Picture This Plus Mystic. Um, it's the opalescent. Um, it looks like I did this in 2006, so quite a long while ago. I love black work. So this is from Dragon Dreams, who I, as far as I know, is no longer designing, but I loved Dragon Dreams. I did a lot of their pieces back in the day and I collected a lot more. I still have more I'd like to do at some point. Um, but this is my little dragon under a castle. Um, I like hanging this in here. A lot of things I hang in here, I just feel like fit well with it being a library. They're like fantasy story kind of based characters and scenes um, that I enjoy. So I did a number of her, she had a series of black work pieces. I think Jennifer Aikman Smith, I think was her name. Um, again, of Dragon Dreams. She had, as far as I know, four black work pieces or designs and I've done three of them with plans to do the fourth. Um, but yeah, this is one of them. I really enjoy Kings in this room. I didn't plan really well for where to put these after I'd shown them. Hopefully I won't knock everything over. Um, this is another one. I did this one for my husband, um, which is why it has my initials and his, his initials at the bottom. This was for Dragon again. Uh, this was a Dragon Dreams piece. I see these still for sale. I've seen them in old, in LNS's, you know, just randomly you go in. They have old charts that they still have some Dragon Dreams stuff around. Um, I would imagine you could get this on like eBay or Etsy pretty easily. I don't remember the, I think it was just called Black Work Dragon. Um, but I really enjoyed working on this and I did it in like a kind of plum, you know, um, kind of a plum or burgundy type color. Um, I didn't want to do it in just black. I did all of these pieces. I, I picked a color for. I really enjoyed doing it. So that was Black Work Dragon from Dragon Dreams. And this is the last of the black work pieces. So I think this one's called Black Work Princess, I assume. Um, again, from Dragon Dreams. I love her dress. I love the design on it. I love the braid in her hair, the way the shading is done behind the arch, the flowers going up the side. I really, really enjoyed doing her. Um, the fourth one that I haven't done yet is, I think, the, I think unicorn and I have the chart and I, I did this piece in the dragon on the same fabric which is just from a big box store um, it's an even weave of some point some sort and um, I actually I haven't kitted up <laughs> I have the fabric cut and ready whenever I actually feel up to pulling out the unicorn and finishing that one oh yeah. I wish I knew I could think of the designer's name on this. Um, I'm a big fan of thunderstorms, which one has started here, so you might hear thunder or rain in the background. Loved this castle. Um, I dated it, so this was done in 2006. Um, just 
castle thunderstorm I, it's beautiful this is like right up my alley I love gothic novels and this is just this is me <laughs> in a cross stitch um, I absolutely love it I remember vividly stitching this and how excited I was to stitch the, the lightning and those um, storm clouds it was so much fun Oh, and this, um, I know was a 28 count, it's 28 count black linen, which I can't stitch on very easily anymore. <laughs> I got reading glasses this past year, which has made stitching a lot easier, but it is definitely a lot more difficult to stitch on black than it was when I was stitching that. Um, so this piece, I don't remember the name of, um, but what is obviously Shepherd's Bull. Obvious if you're familiar with them, Shepherd's Bush obviously their style um, I do get these things professionally framed it's pretty rare that I frame them myself um, I don't remember the name of this one but I love it well it's Halloween I love anything witchy it's got the moon in there pumpkins this was really fun to work on um, I did hang it in my daughter's room I have two sons and a daughter that are all still relatively young the oldest one is getting ready to start middle school and the other two are still in elementary school um, so this hung in my daughter's room for quite a long while. Uh, last summer, during the pandemic, um, we entertained ourselves by redoing all the kids' bedrooms. We let them pick paint colors. We limited them to two colors each <laughs> and um, painted all the kids' rooms and redid them. And part of that was letting the kids decide what they actually wanted hung in the rooms and what they didn't want hung in the rooms anymore. And um, she didn't want this in her room anymore, which is fine. So I moved that down here to our library. So. Sorry, I don't know the name. It's Shepherd's Bush. Um, and it looks like 32 count. And it's probably 32. Okay, so now we're getting to some really big pieces. Um, if you watched my last video, I think I talked about stitching a mermaid for my husband um, when he got his first job in Florida and we were not first full-time job. He'd been teaching as an adjunct for years. Um, we were not thrilled about Florida itself, but were um, very happy that he had his first time job. Um, but of course he knew I was kind of bummed about it being in Florida. Um, no offense to any of you who live in Florida. I'm just like an autumn girl all the way and I love hills and mountains. So to move to a completely flat state where it's summer all the time was just not my jam. Um, Anyway, my way of showing him I was like okay with it and still happy for him and excited was to stitch him a mermaid. Um, I showed you in the last video Mermaid of the Pearls from Mirabilia, which I still have as a whip. This was in 2008 when he moved to Florida in 2009. I moved to several months later um, that I started these things. Um, I started them in 2008. So Mermaid of the Pearls is still a whip. Um, but Galatea, I finished. Um, I see if it's faded. I finished Galatea in 2010. That's pretty good for me. Um, this is from uh, Passione Ricamo. I'm probably butchering that name. It's an Italian designer. You can get um, most, if not all, of her designs as downloads from her website. I love her designs. Now, Galatea... Um, the original chart, I believe, has it has like an ocean scene over here, like with corals and I think a treasure chest. I did not stitch those at the time. That was um, primarily because I, I wasn't real confident. My dog's trying to get it. <laughs> I wasn't real confident um, about when I was going to get to finish this. At the time, I hadn't finished a lot of large pieces. I was very nervous. Um, about how much longer it would take me if I stitch all that. I didn't think it really needed it. So um, I skipped those. My dog's joining me, if you can hear her paws and her collar jangling. Um, but yeah, that's Galatea. My husband loves it. Um, he was thrilled to get it. And I love the frame. It's got like frayed rope in it. So it's like very nautical without being <laughs> too kitschy. Hi, Freya. My dog's name is Freya. She's a mini golden doodle. And she was napping. Give me one sec. Okay, I'm back. Uh, hopefully I will figure out how to put those two 
videos together. I had to take my dog out to uh, use the restroom. And she's like licking herself right behind me <laughs> on the chair. Um, and she's soaking wet. We're both wet because it's pouring outside. But I'm going to continue. Hopefully I'll figure out how to make this work. Um, so this is one of my favorite pieces of all time. It's from Lavender Wings. I'm not sure what it's called. It might be part of the verse that was used as the name. Um, it's called The Stars Are Blooming, the, or it, it reads, The stars are blooming, the moon is in flower, while all else sleeps, I treasure this hour. Um, and that's so me. Um, I, uh, I'm a total night owl. I spent majority of my teenage years and 20s um, staying up late and sometimes all night stuck in me just one more chapter <laughs> um, like time loop that I know many of you can um, can understand um, so I stitched this and I love this piece and maybe let's see I stitched this in 2006 this was a huge piece for me to stitch back then. Um, maybe 10 years later, <laughs> I noticed that I never did the back stitching at the very bottom here. And um, I was not real confident at like making changes to charts back then. So I don't know if the chart left out the back stitching there, which is possible, you know, cause sometimes there's mistakes on charts. Or if I just like didn't do it, <laughs> like maybe ended a strand and never went back to finish it. Um, but I'm not gonna fix it now. I think it looks fine. I love this piece. Um, and again, it makes me think of staying up all night reading. And um, so our library is the perfect, perfect place. I love nighttime when it's quiet. My dog's shaking behind me. I love nighttime when it's quiet and um, just curled up with a book. It's lovely. Hopefully my dog will settle down here in a minute. Um, oh, okay. This is a dragon that I stitched. I don't see the year on it. I'm at this point, especially if I stitch something that's a bit larger, I always put my initials in the year. Right, stop it. Um, but uh, I, I wasn't as good about doing it back then. So this is a dragon that I know I started stitching after my first son was born. I'm pretty sure it came as like a free chart in a tube of maybe Charles Craft fabric, which is not what I stitched this on. I stitched this on a, like a tan colored Monaco. Um, it might be like their tea dyed Monaco, I'm not sure. I, but I remember buying whatever tube of fabric it was I bought to get this chart because I was like, ooh, dragons. Um, and this would have been stitched like prior to 2010, like sometime, no, it would have been purchased probably prior to 2010, but not stitched until like 2000, I stitched this in like 2010, 2011, I believe, um, which was after my son, oldest son was born. Um, at the time, I know I was kind of desperate to find the sorts of things that I stitch. Um, there was, I love Mirabilia, I love Teresa Wensler, I love Dragon Dreams. Not really a Heaven and Earth Designs kind of stitcher, although that was around back then. Um, finding, excuse me, like fantasy creatures and stuff, at least I, kind of anytime I found one, I jumped on it, because I feel like that stuff was more rare back then. Um, but this hung in my oldest son's room like, until last summer when we redid it and he said he didn't really need it there anymore. Um, I have to say though, even though it's a dragon, it's not really my style. <laughs> I'm not in love with this piece. I mean, it was fine to stitch, but I stitched it mostly because it was a dragon. Um, and there weren't that many dragons out there for me to stitch. Um, but it's, I guess, a little too like, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know what it is about it that makes it, I want to say like it's a little too cartoony or juvenile, but I'm not sure that's really accurate because I love dragon dreams and her dragons are typically very like cartoony and juvenile looking. There's something about it, I don't dislike it, but I wouldn't stitch it today. There's too many other 
awesome dragons out there to stitch. Um, I wouldn't pick it up today. But my husband loves it, so it does hang here in our library. Okay, I have five more, and these are my Mirabilias. So, they're not all of my Mirabilias, but these five usually fill up <laughs> this wall behind me. They're kind of like staggered up and down, kind of like an M shape, all along this wall. And the, the like design of them has changed, or the configuration of them has changed a lot over time as I've like added to the wall. Um, so this first one, I'm like stressed out doing floss tube. I feel like I'm blanking on names. Um, this is, oh, I am gonna blank on the name. This is Mirabilia Woodland Fairy. This is Woodland Fairy. Um, now, I stitched this on Picture This Plus Monster Mash. If you order Monster Mash today, this is not what you will get. <laughs> Monster Mash today really does not have this light blue in it. Or if you have some that has light blue, it'll be like very, very little of it. It's more of like this green and like this dark tone that you get today. You, do, you, you really miss most of this. I have several newer pieces of Monster Mash. None of them look like this. I bought this piece of Monster Mash. It would have been somewhere between 2004 and 2008. This is one of the first Mirabilia's I did. My LNS had this piece of Monster Mash in stock. I took one look at it and was like, that's looking up at the sky through the trees. That's what that piece of fabric is. And it needs one of Mirabilia's fairies sitting on a branch on it. Um, it just does. That's what that piece of fabric is. It has to have one of those fairies on it. Um, so I picked this one. It was, I thought the yellow dress um, would look great with the fabric. So she's the one I picked. Um, some of the other Marabilia fairies with like blues, I didn't think would look as good on the fabric. I really wanted it to pop. The only change I made is her hair. So she was charted as a blonde with some um, like beads and things in her hair. I don't know if you can tell I'm definitely going gray but I am a redhead I have auburn hair so I wanted to make her a redhead I did not do the best job of converting her hair <laughs> it was still a relatively new stitcher and I took out the beads because I, I was like I can't handle the beads like maybe I can convert the hair color but I'm not gonna be able to handle adding the beads in there too which I think was my mistake because without the beads to break it up she comes out kind of bright of Frankenstein looking with her hair. I'm not thrilled with, with how I did. But I mean, it's fine. I don't think most people um, glance at it and think bright of Frankenstein, but <laughs> I kind of do. Um, but I still love it. It's, I, I can't not love a Mirabilia that I've stitched. Um, I think she's beautiful. If I ever stitch her again, I still might convert her hair to a redhead, but I'd do a better job and probably add in those beads to, to break it up a little bit. I'm glad I've gotten more confident with my, my stitching as well as conversion skills over time. Um, so this one is um, the Dreaming Fairy, or Enchanted Dreamer. I believe she's called Enchanted Dreamer from Mirabilia. I stitched this one for my daughter and it hung in her room until last summer when she decided she didn't really need it in her room. <laughs> um, so I moved it down here and I've labeled it with, I use, um, I use these labels from Lindy Stitches most of the time, I love them. I've labeled it with her name so she gets it when I die. Um, so if we know it goes to her. Um, I had fun stitching this one. It's on Monaco. Oh, and you can see the strands of beads at the bottom move. They're actually loose in there. I, um, when, uh, I, I always bead last. I love beading last. Um, it's like the finishing touch. I just love it. I enjoy beading, um, but I like doing it all in one go at the end. It just feels so great to finish up a Mirabilia that way to me. Um, I know not everyone likes that. But there were these long strands of beads. These were charted to be like attached, like stitched normally. 
And I was just looking, I was like, why would I do that? <laughs> I don't want to do that. Can I just like string them and let them hang? Um, I, I like them this way, honestly, I like them the other way too. But for this piece, this is what I was in the mood for. So that's what I did. I don't think I'd always do it that way, but I like how it turned out and I certainly would do it again in future if I wanted to, or if, if that's the mood I was in. I love her face. She just looks so peaceful and restful. I thought it might put my daughter in a restful and peaceful mood at bedtime, <laughs> having it in her room. But um, this was one that I finished relatively recently. I started it back like pre-2008. Here, that's a date. I finished it in 2018. I usually now, especially with these big pieces, you might not be able to see it, it's signed right here. What I usually do is pick a floss color that blends in with the background, whatever the fabric is I have. And I put my initials in the date. I like doing it with a floss that blends in with the background because that way it doesn't interfere with the design or the picture. Um, I don't want it to really stand out, but I want it to be there as a record if somebody goes looking for it. So that's how I do it. Um, this one is another Marabilia. This is Adia, the garden fairy, um, but I did not stitch her wings. Um, so this is another piece I stitched relatively early on. I don't know if I signed this one though, because this one was stitched. I can remember where I lived when I stitched things. I remember what framer framed them for me. So I know I stitched this in 2000 or prior to either 2008 or earlier. It looks like I did not put a date on it. Um, so this was in that kind of period of time where I was far less confident about my abilities to actually finish a Mirabilia. Um, So I, I waited to do her wings last because I was like, I can always leave them off if I want to. And I think I might like her without them. And um, you know, I finished her, the rest of her up and was like, yeah, I don't want to do the wings. I want to have it finished. And I love the way she looks, the gracefulness of her arms. I mean, she looks just like a dancer. The way she's holding those strands of beads out. I love the, the strands of beads over her arms and her dress, the way they mimic the strands that she's holding. I just think she's stunning and she looks very much more like a, like a forest goddess to me. Um, this way she does have tons of beads on her. Um, yeah, this is Adia um, and was a, a fairy until I took her wings off. Oh, I wanted to mention too about her fabric. This is one of the few pieces I didn't wash when I finished. I always wash mine when I'm done. Um, I work on things for years. They get dusty, sometimes they get grimy. Of course, they have my hands oils all over them. Um, uh, there were periods there where they could have, you know, spit up from my kids. I mean, it could have been like anything. She, her, I did not wash. This is a 28 count. Um, it's actually Lugana. I almost always stitch on um, linen, but this is a Lugana and uh, it's from Silk Weaver like way back in the day. I did test a corner of this before washing it and it bled horribly, so I was like, okay, not washing this one. Um, now a days when I stitch something, when I start something, I pre-wash the fabric and that takes care of any problems I'm gonna have. Um, I pre-wash a fabric until the water runs clear and then I let it dry over a white paper towel. And I assume that if no color has transferred to that white paper towel while the fabric is drying and the water was running clear, that, um, the, uh, that there's not going to be any color transfer to floss if I wash it when I'm done. Um, I also use Synthropole which is a, uh, a textile detergent that's supposed to uh, act almost like a color catcher without the color catcher sheet. Um, it, it keeps loose dye from redepositing onto, um, onto your work. And I've had really good luck with that. Um, so that was one of the few pieces I didn't wash when it was complete because there would have been a, a dye transfer problem. 
Okay, I'm almost done with these older finished objects. Um, this is Mirabilia's May Emerald Fairy. Um, again, this is my older stitching, leaving things off. There was a line, I want to say it was of strawberries down here. I'm not born in May, I just liked the fairy, so I stitched it. Um, I left those off. This is uh, an old, this is sugar maple fabrics. It's a 28 count opalescent. Um, I love the wings. I love that the fabric shows through. These wings are mostly unstitched. They're just backstitched with Krynik where the wing pieces are supposed to overlap. I love the way Mirabilia does wings and um, some beads up here for the marks on her wings. I love her. I think she is absolutely stunning. I love using the sugar maple fabrics. I still have a very small stash of sugar maple fabrics um, that I can use. I love her dress, the beading on it. Anyway, I, I love stitching this. Um, it was not dated, but it was definitely stitched um, sometime like up like between 2004 and 2008, probably like 2007, 2008-ish, she was stitched. But that's Mirabilia's May Emerald Fairy. She's completed all of the calendar fairies now, if I remember correctly. Okay, this last one I'm super excited about. It's um, the most recent thing I've gotten back from a framer. Back in the day, and I'm thinking like 2004 to 2008, when I was relatively new to stitching, there was a Mirabilia message board. And that's where I learned about Jill Rensel and her framing shop. Now, if you're not familiar with her, you can just Google Jill Rensel. Rensel is R-E-N-S-E-L. Her framing shop, she does a lot with Shepherd's Bush or has, I believe, not an expert on Jill Rensel, but she is the one who, her studio, she has somebody, Amber, I think Amber does the painting. They do all kinds of like fancy cuts for the mats and they paint. I think Amber's the one that does that. They'll paint on the mats um, to kind of like extend the design out onto the mats. They just have an amazing selection of frames and mats and then they do the fancy cutting and the painting and it's just beautiful and it's been on my bucket list for forever <laughs> to send something to Jill Rensel. Um, I didn't send any of the earlier pieces partly because I was scared like nervous I don't know how to do this um, like I don't want to have to call someone on the phone and talk to them um, not really sure how to make it work not even sure if they would take things through the mail um, also when I'd only stitched like two or three Mirabilia's, I did not want to put one in the mail. <laughs> that sounded like a horrible idea. Um, now I've stitched uh, quite a few more of them. I of course don't want something to go missing in the mail, but if it did, it would be okay. <laughs> it would not be the end of the world. I would be sad, but life would go on. Um, so I decided, uh, as I was stitching this next piece, which is Mirabilia's Midsummer Night's Fairy, that when it was done, I was going to send it to Jill Rensel. I had done some poking around and she has information on her website, I believe, about how to mail a piece to her, um, which made me feel better. I was like, okay, obviously this is a thing people do. <laughs> they know how to handle this. Um, you can just mail her a piece. Um, if she's taken the time to like put the information about how to do it on her um, website. So this is my, and totally a bucket list item. It's like place, like places to visit around the world and having something framed by Jill Wenzel. That's what was on my bucket list. This one's been crossed off now. So excited about it. Um, so this is Midsummer Night's Fairy. It's huge. It's much bigger than the others. I'll show you a close-up of it. Um, I mean it's it's a large piece and then with the framing it's just so much larger. So um, this is one of the older fairies but I didn't start it until probably five or six years ago and kind of worked on it slowly and then kind of dedicated a lot of my time to it um, until I finally finished it. But I love her. I love the blues and the purple, the ribbons. Um, 
And this, oh, so the painting. So all of that there is the painting they did on the frame, knocking into different pieces. Did the same thing up in this corner, and I love the frame. I, that frame is just the most beautiful frame I've ever seen. It's stunning. I absolutely love it. Um, she does have tons of beads, so she was stitched on a 28 count, either sugar maple fabrics or um, silk weaver, old silk weaver, like would have purchased this prior to 2008, 2009. Um, absolutely love her, love the framing. I'm so glad I sent something to be framed by Jill Rensel. And in case any of you, like I'm, I swear I'm not like, this isn't paid promotion. <laughs> I just really enjoyed getting something framed by her. Um, she actually still has, she has two more of my finished pieces. She has um, Nora Corbett's Azure, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's a color, but Azure, Azure Mermaid, A-Z-U-R-E, which is one of the smaller Nora Corbett's. And she has my, um, oh, what's it called? The 25th anniversary Lady Marabilia she has right now too. Um, the In case any of you are curious, the process for getting Jill to frame something worked very smoothly, in my opinion. Um, I mailed it, I did uh, like express mail things. I didn't overnight them. I just feel like maybe if you pay more for the shipping and it gets there fast, you know, to get there faster, maybe there's less chance something's gonna go missing. Um, so I did like express ship it, like two day shipping or something. I'm on the East Coast, she's in Utah, I believe. Um, so mailed it there, they let me know when it arrived. I, I They ask that you shoot them an email or give them a call to let them know if you're sending something um, so they know to expect it. Email me back to let me know that it got in there safely. And then it can take time. It can take several months. I think Midsummer Night's Fairy took three or four months, maybe longer, to get back because um, they're busy. They have a long queue. Um, but they sent pictures. They initially sent uh, a series of pictures with suggested mats and frames with like lots of options. You can pick things. You can like pick and choose from different pictures or you can say none of that's working. Can we try again? You can give them as much direction as you want. Um, I didn't give much direction. I'm never good at... I know what I want when I see it. Like I know I, I like it when I see it, but I don't... I, I'm not good at like giving direction ahead of time um, to a framer. Um, and I did that a little bit, I kind of mixed and matched. Um, I fell in love with the frame, so I, I wanted to use that frame. Um, once you've like nailed down the mats and frame that you want, they go to work. Now I didn't, I'm assuming, I'm sure you could ask them ahead of time if you wanted to like pre-approve things. I didn't ask about what, how they were gonna cut the mats or exactly what the painting would look like. They just did it and it, I'm thrilled. I'm so, so thrilled with how it worked. Um, and then when it was done, I paid them. I can say that um, if, I don't know, if you're used to framing things with coupons at like a big box store, you might not like the price, but um, it actually was cheaper it, from my experience than using my local framer. Now my local framer is very good and I've been very happy with, um, with how they framed my things. I, they, they do a great job, they have all kinds of fun frames and fancy mats and super fun stuff, although they don't do so much of the fun cutting shapes for the mats, and they don't do the painting on it. Um, but this cost less than most of my recent Marabilias that I finished, um, getting framed at my local framer, and I feel like I got so much more with the painting and the fun cuts to the mats, and the frame is amazing. Um, so uh, to me, it was totally worth it, even with paying the shipping costs. This was cheaper than a lot of what I've paid recently with my local framer. Um, and of course, the, the Jill Rensel shop gave me a full quote ahead of time, so I knew what to expect. Um, so I was, I was thrilled, absolutely thrilled with that. So I don't have tons of space here. What I'm going to do, I don't have like a surface to put things on. So what I'm going to do is pause again, and again, hope I'm figure out how to splice these videos together later. Um, I'm gonna pause and put these frames back up on the wall 
and gather some of my recent whips and things that I've been focusing on. Um, and then I'll come back and I can show you some of the things I have in progress. Thanks, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I am back to show you some whips. Um, and you can see now my Mirabilia is hanging behind me. Um, these here are stitchy friends that my daughter has made for me. They're just like little creatures that she made and colored in and um, cut out. And um, she sucks. <laughs> she made them for me to keep me company while I stitch. So those just kind of get wedged between the bottom of the frame and the wall and they hang out with me. Um, Cause this is my normal stitchy spot. Um, this mess that you'll see here that I'm not gonna clean up for a floss tube video. This is how I live and it's certainly how I craft. This bin here is full of some whips, a lot of like kitted up projects, a lot of things that aren't Mirabilia's. Um, and then here, the stack is like things I think I'm actually gonna get to <laughs> in the next few days. Um, that stack tends to like grow and grow and grow and grow and then every once in a while I go through and clean it all out, put things away, and then it starts growing again. Um, this basket over here is knitting stuff. Um, so yeah, this is this is my stitchy spot. It stays pretty messy. It's it's a real lived in used area. So I'm going to try <laughs> to show you some of the the whips that I've been focusing on recently. I think I mentioned in my last video. So I have hundreds of whips. Um, I don't even remember what the count was for Mirabilia whips. I have a lot of Mirabilia whips. Um, also, like dozens and dozens and dozens of them. But I don't, I don't do a formal rotation. I am a stitch what you want when you feel like it kind of stitcher. But what I usually end up doing is having like some focus pieces. So I might just feel like stitching on one particular piece a lot, um, sometimes for months. Um, when I was stitching Midsummer Night's Fairy, I stitched almost nothing else for like two months. Um, she got to like a halfway point and I was like, I wanna finish this sucker up. So I, I worked really hard on her for a couple of months and got her done. That's typically what happens. Um, but I might stitch on something a lot for a couple of months and put it away for 10 years. I'll come back to it eventually. Um, so, I'm just gonna go through, there's probably a dozen or so projects around me that are things that are, have been on my recent radar and things that I really wanna make a lot of progress on in the coming months, like bet between now and the end of the year. Um, okay, I'll show you what I've got. Um, this, things are already falling over. Um, this is Country Cottage Needleworks. I think these are pretty popular. This is Snow Village. Um, this is the Frozen Hot Chocolate Shop. Now I don't do tons of smalls, but this is one I do. Although I started this, I think at least two years ago, and I did like a couple of days work on it and then it just sat. And I just picked it up again yesterday and I'm like tearing through it. So I just kind of want to finish this. Um, I am a huge hot chocolate fiend. I love hot chocolate. I can't stand coffee. I love hot chocolate. I love the like six months of the year where I can justify drinking hot chocolate because <laughs> it's cold enough out. And then my son in particular, my middle child, um, started saying he likes cold cocoa <laughs> because my husband would go to Dunkin' Donuts and buy one hot chocolate for me and one hot chocolate for our children to share, but they didn't like it hot. So especially my middle son, um, he would put ice cubes in it, <laughs> would get cold. So he'd say he likes cold cocoa, which is basically just chocolate milk. Anyway, it was like a thing. It made us laugh and made us smile. So when this chart came out, I was like, I have to stitch that. That's gonna go in my kitchen. Um, so this is where I am on it right now. I should have something to hold behind it. Um, I mean, it's it's quick and easy. Um, yesterday and today, I did all of the, all, most of the white that's up here, a lot of the darker red, all of the dark green. I just need to sit down and finish it. And I'm, I'm totally in that like mode to do that right now. Um, I do use Q-snaps for a lot of things. Um, so that's why this is in like a smaller Q-snap. I'm not really sure where to go next. I'm gonna do 
I'm gonna do some of my, my stuff that's on, or, or show you some of the things that's on larger frames, and I'm not taking things out of the frames. Once I get something loaded in, I don't really like to mess with it. So, I'm not even sure which, oh yes I am. This is Damask Roses by Mirabilia. Um, you can see I've got basically just up around the corner. Now, I've had plenty of people, not on YouTube, but um, in real life over the years, tell me I'm, I'm doing it wrong. I think I might have mentioned this in my last video. Um, a lot of people will wind their fabric on the other way, so they're stitching in the well. I don't, I just don't like doing it that way. I don't find it comfortable, and I haven't really had a problem with like wear on the stitches. I keep these in a closet when I'm not working on them that nobody gets to. Um, I also, I started this, I know I started it in 2009 because I started it when my husband and I were going to Athens in Greece. This is a very Greek looking design to me and I wanted to stitch something <laughs> that was 12 years ago and it's not done. Um, but I converted it because when I looked at the chart and discovered that her dress here is stitched, is actually stitched in like the 924 range, I wanna say which is a beautiful range, I love it, but from the cover photo, and I'm sorry I don't have the cover photo to show you, but it's Damask Roses by Mirabilia if you wanna search for it. The cover photo, I thought it was the 500 range. I thought it was like 500 to 504, which is like my favorite range of DMC. So I converted it, and I think it's gonna turn out okay. I was brave enough to convert it back then. It couldn't have seemed like too difficult or tricky. So that's my damask roses, and I really hope to get her finished in the next couple of years. Oh, Clay by Kim. I fell down a Clay by Kim rabbit hole um, after seeing, I learned about Clay by Kim from Rocio, um, Kokohama Stitchery. That's how I first heard about Clay by Kim. I spent, I think, six months completely unable to get any Clay by Kim's and that was like refreshing her Etsy shop a hundred times a day trying so hard and then I had a spurt where I was managing to get flowers which are beautiful but only flowers no dragons <laughs> for months and then I like hit the sweet spot and I have managed to get a lot of dragons my husband helps me um, we're on different devices when there's an update, one of us goes on 5G on our phone, the other person stays on our Wi-Fi, um, and we've had some really good luck. So I don't, I, I now I skip a lot of our updates. If there's something I really love that I don't already have something similar to, I'll go in and do it. Um, but I'm, I'm let everybody else have fun and collect now. I got really lucky for a while and was able to get some great pieces. Um, so this next one is the only um, Chatelaine that I've started. It's the Egypt Mandala Garden. Um, it also has two Clay by Kim needle minders on it. We were very excited to get um, the Scarab. So you can see I haven't gotten very far in it. So here's what's going on with the Egypt Mandala Garden, which I hope to actually get back to. I basically have been stuck in indecision land for a while. I told you earlier that I pre-wash my fabric, like on Mirabilia's. And if there's Karen Water Lilies, I pre-wash those too. And then stitch with them. And it works great, and I don't have dying or bleeding issues when I'm done. <sighs> for those of you who are familiar with Chatelaine, and I'm sorry, I don't have a cover pick for this one either. Um, I tend not to print things out on my computer that take up lots of ink. Um, there's like a million silk flosses that bleed a lot. And I've been, I've gotten very comfortable with pre-washing those, um, the Karen Water Lilies that Mirabilia uses and fabrics certainly. I started pre-washing the fibers for Chatelaine because I was like, there's no way I'm going to spend years stitching something and not be able to wash it something's gonna happen to it. I need to be able to wash the sucker when it's done. So I started pre-washing flosses. <sighs> it's like not working. A lot of those flosses are just continuing to leach dye. Now, to be clear, 
the color of the floss is not changing. A dark blue is the same dark blue after I pre-washed it. Um, this is excess dye. Um, and I do, not professionally, but I do dye a lot myself. I dye my own cross stitch fabric. I sometimes dye my own quilting fabric. I dye lots and lots of yarn for knitting and fiber for spinning. So I'm not unfamiliar with dyeing. Um, these flosses I don't think are, I, I, I think I've reached the point where I think it's probably not worth the effort to continue pre-washing them because I don't think I'm ever gonna get to get back to stitching this. Um, a lot of what I've stitched is just DMC. I think maybe all that I've stitched so far is DMC. Um, it's like, a, you know, I'll be wash, I'll wash a floss a dozen times and it's still leaching a lot of dye, which means there's a lot of excess dye applied to those flosses, um, which surprises me. Um, but they're still leaching. And I'm only like, I'll do, I usually wash like four flosses at once because I have space to like lay them out to dry. And I lay them on a wet paper, or white paper towel. Um, and they're just like so much dye coming off. And I started with like one of each of four different brands. So I could see how it was going. It's not going great. And the thing is, it's kind of like a lowest common denominator thing. If I have even one floss on this piece that's gonna bleed, I can't wash the piece. <laughs> It's not like I can just wash some sections and not others. Um, so I like I'm like 90% in the place where I'm like I need to stop trying to wash them. I just need to stitch it and hope for the best, and hope that no one like throws their popcorn at it or something, and that you know I'll just have to deal with the finger oils and like. I'm, I'm almost to that place where I, I'll jump back in and just stitch with the fibers and not be willing to wash it when it's done. I'm not quite there yet. So I went gung-ho on this for a couple of months, I think it last fall, and then started washing the silks and, and just reached this place of indecision and it stalled out. But um, hopefully soon I'll suck it up. <laughs> and deal with the fact that this won't be washed and uh, I'll go back to, to stitching on it. This is one of the Omonic frames that I really, really love. They keep the fabric so incredibly tight. And especially for something like this, um, usually my Mirabilia is if I put them in Q-snaps, once I wash them, all the stitches just pop right back into shape and they look beautiful. Um, but especially if this isn't being washed, um, I, I can't, you know, and with all the beads, you can't like use a Q-snap. So I love these Amonic frames. Um, I don't remember who I saw it first on a floss tube and um, ordered one set to start and I just, I love them. So I have them in a bunch of sizes. Okay, what's next? Um, next I will show you, this one I just started. <laughs> it started this Sunday because I really needed another Mirabilia to work on. Um, <laughs> this is Moonlight Lullaby. So the story behind this is that my, my mother had stitched birth announcements for my mother-in-law for, for two of my three children. My older two children, my mother gifted birth announcements to my mother-in-law. I stitched the birth announcements that we have here in the house for my kids, but my mom decided she wanted to do this for my mother-in-law. Well, she never got to child number three. So I was with my mother-in-law last week and she was like, hey, do you think you could give me one for your daughter, um, my third child? And I kind of simultaneously jumped at the chance. And at the same time was like, I don't wanna do that. But, um, but I, I, it is fun. I mean, it was like, oh, once I, once I was realized, I thought at first, like, I better go look for some birth announcements. They don't tend to stash that sort of thing a whole lot. And then I was like, wait a minute. I bet some of those, like Mirabilia did those little stitches charts way back in the day and I bet one of those would work. And as soon as I got that idea, I was like, this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna try to focus on this and get it done in the next year or so. Um, it's not a huge Mirabilia, it's a little bit smaller. Um, but I love this piece and what I'm gonna do is take out the quote and instead down here, put my daughter's name and birth date. And I don't usually put the, the birth weight on birth samplers. I, 
kind of like don't get that. I'm like, who cares what, what they weigh? Um, I have a hard time even remembering those kinds of facts about my children, but my mother-in-law wants it. <laughs> so I'll have room down there to put um, her name and birth date and her weight. So I just started this the other day. Um, so there's not much done. Again, it's a clay by Kim needle minder. Um, so this is just part of the, the dress hanging down her hair and I've started a little bit of the top wing. So that's all I have done so far, but would like to focus on it um, here for a while. Um, next, I will show you Titania. So this might be kind of glary. This is Titania. Marabilia used to have kits like this available. I got these in Hobby Lobby. No judgment from me, but I do not stop shop at Hobby Lobby anymore. Back in the day before I knew how political the chain was, I did. So this would have been purchased back like 2006, 7, 8 kind of uh, years. I have a few of these kits and I, I feel lucky to have them. They, I, This is what I stitched Midsummer Night's Fairy from. I had more than enough supplies in it. I did switch out the fabric, but more than enough supplies. So Titania, I really want to focus on. I initially, years ago, when I saw Titania, I liked her, but I, you know, didn't feel the need to stitch her right away. And then my LNS at the time had her hanging on the wall, stitched on black fabric. And it blew me away. It is not something I would have thought about doing but absolutely blew me away. She pops so well on that black. She's stunning. Um, and right away was like, I'm stitching her on black. So I kitted her up. I got her started way back in the day and then she sat for more than a decade. Well, now my eyes aren't so good. <laughs> um, so black fabric is not uh, as easy as it once was, but um, there we go, that's better. Um, but it is beautiful and it is totally worth it. Um, I do need to stitch on her in this room where we have some really good overhead light. There's also a big sliding glass door that gives a lot of light. And, um, and I have reading glasses now uh, and that makes it doable. And then some, to some extent, I, I stitch almost by feel um, when I'm doing her, but I, I need to get her done. I really, I've actually been focusing on her quite a bit in the last couple of months. Um, along with a number of other pieces. I really want to um, to finish her up sooner rather than later. Um, and the dragon, needle minders, clay by Kim. And I don't remember, I got this off Etsy somewhere. Um, sorry, I don't remember where. Um, what's next? Okay, so this one is Red by Marabilia. And she has been in timeout. For a long time. Um, I'm trying to get back to her. She and I were like on fire for like months and then we had a frogging incident. So this is red. Um, I love her. She's beautiful. I feel like I made a lot of progress on her very quickly. Well considering that it usually takes me years to um, to stitch in her pill yet because I go back and forth so much. Um, I made tons of progress really quickly and then I started to stitch the like puff of her sleeve over where or her I think it's her sleeve over oh I have the cover picture I can show you oh it's the top like white poof of her dress so this is what she looks like I started to stitch this over here and um, I actually had a great time. My husband, we were at our cabin and I wanna stitch this to hang over the fireplace at our cabin. Like Little Red Riding Hood, of course it needs to be in our cabin. That's like amazing. So I stitched that a ton of white on the top of her dress. Um, I'm not a super fast stitcher. I took that, I got to spend about 10 hours stitching that weekend. Stitched the section of white and it was all off by one stitch and I almost never have to frog but I had to I had to frog all 10 hours worth of work it was all 10 hours of just stitching white and I had to frog all of it and it just killed me 
So she went in time out probably for like a year <laughs> or more. And I've just started to try to kind of pull her back up because I, I would, what I, I want to finish her and I want to send her to Jill Rensel to get framed and, um, and I want to get her hanging over, over the fireplace. I think it's going to look fantastic. Um, I need to put things away as I go or I will, oh, I want to show the chart or I will lose track of things. I do stitch from the original Marabilia chart most of the time. Um, I am willing to buy two copies of a chart, one to collect and one to stitch from. I love stitching on those huge charts. I will fold them every which way. I love being able to see so much of it at once on the chart. Um, sometimes I'll photocopy them. I have taken them to like FedEx and stuff to get the big full size copies. I have found that doesn't always work. Sometimes it, the, it's too light or kind of blurry. You can't see the stitches as well. And with a pandemic, I just haven't been going out. So you will see, you might see a glimpse of a, of a big chart just to answer that question. If any of you have it, I do often stitch from the original chart and I will buy two copies if I wanna keep one, one copy like pristine and make an absolute mess of the other. Um, what else do I have? Okay, more, I have one more Marabilia and then two Teresa Wenslers to show you. I'm almost done. See, I can't show you all my stitching in one video because it, it would go on forever. Um, so this is um, Fairy Moon. This, I want to say this is like number one. This is like, it's certainly one of the first Marabilias. So I never got super far on it. Most of the stitching was done back in the day. Oh, I haven't been telling you fabrics. This is um, Crossed Wing. I don't remember the, I want to say it's Midnight by Crossed Wing. I think that's right. Let me see if I have something here. Um, I do love Crossed Wing's fabrics. I think they're lovely. Um, even though I believe they're Wishel based, I really like them. Oh, Midnight, it is, it's Midnight by Crossed Wing. Um, I know Moonlight Lullaby is on, I don't know the name of it, but it's, it's a relatively neutral from Color and Cotton. Um, Damask Roses is on a natural linen. Um, so is Egypt Man Egypt Mandala Garden. Um, Red is on, I think, Stone or something like that from Crossed Wing. Um, I think that's it. Um, so Fairy Moon. You can see I converted to a redhead. Um, although in the chart, there's not that much variation in her hair color. She was charted as a dark brunette. So um, it's basically just one color. I've, I haven't been thrilled with any of the like reds I've chosen for a conversion. I'm still searching for the red that I really like. My husband really likes this, this red as a conversion. So I just settled on that. So the reason I stalled out on this was because of the blends. Her wings, I think are like basically all blends. At the time, so this was stitching like, you know, I was a relatively new stitcher, only been stitching a few years. At the time, that seemed like an overwhelming thing. Now it doesn't seem like a big deal. <laughs> so I've just started getting back into it and don't see any reason why I shouldn't finish this up um, sooner rather than later, which probably means in the next like three or four years. But um, hopefully, hopefully I'll get that done. And for those of you who aren't familiar with it, I do have a cover photo of that. So here's Fairy Moon. And yeah, I think all those wings, that's mostly blends. And it's a 28 count. Um, almost everything, really everything here is 28 count, except for, sorry, I'm jumping around. Titania, I am stitching on a 32 count. When I stitched from a kit, a Marabellia kit, I didn't want to go to a lower count fabric because that would eat up more floss. Um, and I have a stash of floss, but I can't guarantee the color will match, you know, in case of dye lot issues. So I stuck to a 32 count, which is what the original chart calls for, just to make it more likely I wouldn't have problems with, with running out of, of floss and um, maybe dye lot issues. Okay, so Teresa Wentzler's. I have decided I really need to focus on Teresa Wentzler's. Teresa Wentzler is what 
got me in love with cross stitch to begin with seeing the first fantasy collection book at I think it was AC Moore like almost 20 years ago fell in love absolutely fell in love and at the time I didn't know Mirabilia existed I didn't know LNS's existed and I thought I was just gonna spend my stitching life only stitching Teresa Wentzler's that was before I started stitching one <laughs> they take a long time oh my daughter my daughter's going downstairs to get snacks presumably um that's where like pantry of snacks are at the moment so this one is my favorite ever Teresa Wensler and one that I would like to finish I'm gonna say in the next few years um, I focused on it actually quite a bit this past year and it's still really slow going this is oops, cover photo this is Woodland Fairy she's beautiful Sorry, I am trying to keep my my children out of floss too mixed success um anyway this is woodland fairy from Teresa Wensler. i like i've never seen anything as beautiful as this i am absolutely in love with it i love the little mouse and the fairy and the mushrooms and the border and the flowers and the colors this is stunning and and i need to stitch this this has to be a part of my stitching life um and i mean for years i just didn't do it because i think i just kind of didn't feel up to the task Honestly, the last few years of finishing so many Marabillas has given me a ton of confidence. Like, if I can finish that many Marabillas, why couldn't I stitch a Teresa Wensler? It's still just X's. I'm confident in my counting and my fractional stitches. I just need to sit down and do it. So I've been trying to do more of that. Again, this is a needle minder from Clay by Kim, and there are there is floss on my needle. Um, so this is where I am right now um i actually started this this is from a kit i started this on this is this is a restart and it's on 28 count i think ant antique white from zweigart um i had started this on the kit fra fabric which was a 28 count monaco and i actually got the outside just the the, the last two lines this these the like yellowish and the brown right inside of it I actually got it completely framed out and decided I didn't have enough margin on the kit fabric I love a big margin um, I actually overcast these edges by hand but I don't normally do that I just let my stuff fray um, I, 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 I like being able to clamp it into my frame easily and not be like trying to wedge my needle on the edge if I'm using a q-snap and I do stitch, I stitch a lot of Teresa one, or excuse me, a lot of Marabilia's two-handed on the Amonic frame on a stand. I don't do that with Teresa Wensler's. I enjoy the much, and I think it benefits from the much slower process of um, just poke and stab with one hand in and out. And you'll see, I jump all over. I stitch whatever part of it I feel like stitching. Um, so this piece in particular, and I've started probably, you know, 10 or so Teresa Wensler's is my guess. Um, I think this is probably one of her more complicated pieces in terms of the number of fractionals all over the place. And um, I hear my kids in the background. Um, hey guys, keep it down. Okay, just don't talk because I'm trying to do this floss tube thing. Thanks. Sorry. Um, I think this is, is a more complicated one. So I definitely was working on this some going back and forth with a Marabilia. I like the big blocks of color Marabilias. I find that relaxing. This I don't find difficult, but it requires far more attention. Um, so I've been working on this, or had been working on this, and felt like I needed a break. Um, needed to try something else for a while. Let me put this away, but still wanted to be making progress on a Teresa Wensler. So I picked up a different one that I had going, and in retrospect, it was a great move um, because I picked up, what is this called? Yeah, the Princess and the Dragon. 
I picked up the princess and the dragon. And I think this might be one of the easiest Teresa Wenzler's. Again, I'm, I'm just basing that on the many that I've started. None of them are near completion. Um, but by comparison to Woodland Fairy, this one has um, very few blends. There's still a lot of them. But a lot, there's also a lot that, of flosses that aren't blended. And um, they, give me a minute, my kids are still talking. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully I can figure out again how to splice all these parts through. My kids think they're quiet <laughs> when they're talking, and they're not. Um, so anyway, Princess and the Dragon, far fewer blends. Um, it's relatively small. Um, this, compared to Woodland Fairy, is very easy and relaxing stitching. For any of you out there who um, like like Teresa Winsler and would love to do one, but you've thought, no way, I couldn't do that, it's too hard, or it's too many blends, or it's too much, if you're, if you're willing to give it a try, I would say try this one. Or one of her small freebies. Um, the small freebies would also be, you know, good options. I think she still has those on her webpage. Um, but in terms of her full-size pieces, um, now this you'd have to find on the secondary market. I don't know the backstory to it, but I guess she took all of her dragon designs off patterns online a few years ago, which is, as far as I'm concerned, an absolute tragedy. I love her, her pieces so much. Um, but this one is relatively easy and relaxing. So I'd been working a lot on Woodland Fairy and enjoying it but it was getting to be a lot it was feeling kind of tedious at that point and I picked this up and by comparison it's like so relaxing and easy and I've been flying by like stitching or Teresa Wensler standards <laughs> um, I've been focusing on this a little bit and it feels like I'm flying through it and I'm really enjoying it a lot um, so this was I only had like a little bit of the border in and just a tiny bit of the yellow up here when I started stitching. And um, I've gotten this much done, I don't know, in the last maybe couple of months, which I feel is like tons. When I'm, I stitch so many different things at a time, I've worked on so many um, marabillias in that time. I'm loving doing the dragon's wings, which is kind of color blocky, as color blocky as you get. And I move back and forth while I'm stitching it. I'll, um, See if I can hold this better. I'll stitch, um, like I'll work on some of the more, more. I don't want to say difficult because it is just like X's. It's not, you know, hard. Um, but I'll stitch on the parts that require more concentration. Like I might, you know, work on some of the greens and the border or on the wings, which does have fractionals and things or the confetti stitching up here. I started the, um, there's a castle here. I started this scene. Um, here recently, um, I'll go back and forth between doing that and doing the border. Um, you know, just if I if I want to work on it, but I don't feel like I'm up to all this, the counting and the focus and concentration, I just work on the, the straight line border, which of course I'm done with now. But um, I'm hoping, I mean, I won't get this done this year. I want to say, I'll get, like, I'm gonna try to get it done this year. I won't, but I'm gonna really work hard on it. Um, I, I'm really enjoying this piece. I'm gonna continue to, hopefully continue to focus on it either until it's done or maybe go back to Woodland Fairy. I'd like to continue to keep this and Woodland Fairy as kind of focuses of mine until they're done. Um, I, but I want both of those pieces done. And I, I would love to actually finish some Teresa Wenzler's and get to have them on my wall and enjoy them. So I guess that's it. That's my last whip that I was going to show you. Those are, those are the things that are highest on my radar right now that um, I'm devoting most of my stitching attention to uh, when I'm here. My dog's still there. She's been sitting here this whole time. This is what we do. I sit in this chair. I'm like up on the edge right now. I'm usually sitting back. It's a really big chair. 
um, sitting back comfortably in it and she sits right behind me. <laughs> and uh, that's how we like to spend our time, <laughs> is in the, in the stitching chair. Um, so I think that's it. If you stuck through this for this long, thanks. <laughs> And good job. I feel like this was really long and my throat is really dry. Um, basically my plans going forward are to, to focus on these pieces that I've shown you. Um, I hope to get that birth sampler for my daughter done maybe the next year or so. Um, hopefully get Teresa Wensler finish soon. Like I said, I don't think it will happen this year. I, I, I should be able to get Princess and the Dragon done sometime in 2022. Um, that would be amazing. I, I would be over the moon to actually have Trace Wensler of mine hanging on my wall. I'd be so happy. Um, and then keep working on these these other Mirabilias and finally come up with a, come to terms with doing my Chatelaine without being able to wash the finished piece, I think is what I'll have to do. So thanks for joining me. Um, I, was, I feel awkward doing this. Like, I don't know how to end the video. <laughs> um, but I, I appreciate y'all being here and um, seeing what I have. I hope the other kind of Mirabilia and Teresa Wensler lovers who are out there like me who might search Floss Tube hoping for more eye candy for the things that they love, I hope, um, I hope those of you who are out there find me so that you can can see some more finished work and some more whips. Um, that's what, what drew me to Floss Tube to begin with and, and what motivated me to actually make these videos to share some of those, those larger pieces, the kinds of things that I love stitching. Because if I've been searching for them, I, there's gotta be other people out there who have been looking for more like Mirabilia and Teresa Wensler content. Um, so anyway, I guess that's it. To, I should say today is, August 11th. Today's August 11th. Um, I don't know if I'll get this up today. If not today, sometime, hopefully in the next couple of days. I think I know how to splice those movies together or the, the different clips together, but I'm not positive. So it'll get delayed if I can't figure that out. Um, but thank you for joining me. This is really fun and it was fun to have people like comment. <laughs> my last video um so please keep doing that um hopefully i'll respond or at least heart your comment assuming i know what i'm doing and um if you have questions let me know um it'll probably be at least a couple weeks before i do this again um i probably won't do one again until my kids go back to school in a couple of weeks and i plan to basically just continue to travel through my house and um, pull things off the wall from different areas of the house and, and show you what we have hanging here. Um, so thanks again and hopefully I'll be back soon.